This episode is brought to you by Smart Food. There are a bunch of ways to be smart during the holiday season. Getting the shopping done early, not seating your aunt next to your mom, and snacking on Smart Food popcorn. It's Air Pop popcorn tossed in delicious white cheddar cheese or sweet and salty kettle corn. You are what you eat. Welcome to the Smart Club. Shop now at snacks.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cohen II, and with me as always is... It's Sesame. I hate this movie so much, I actually want to jump off a bridge perhaps in Cardiff. And joining us today from New Realms Media is our good friend, Ryan Moore. Would you like to introduce yourself, sir? Hi, my name is Ryan Moore. I'm a photographer and videographer. I also have a podcast called Spoiler Alert, where me and my buddy Dustin Ripka break down the big ticket movies. Big ticket movies going on right now. And I suggested this for you guys, and I am beyond sorry. Because (laughs) I am about ready to drop a video essay, a deep dive video essay, on why I feel Christmas Vacation is the best comedy sequel ever made. Yes, which it is, <clears throat> but the sequel to it, not so much. <laughs> oh, yeah, story time. I saw this at Blockbuster Video, like, around 2003, 2004, whenever it came out. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This I love Cousin A. What the hell? I'll run it. 70, 83 laugh-free minutes later, <laughs> I want nothing to do with it. I, I blocked it out of my head. And when I was outlining the Christmas Vacation video essay, I was like, I'm going to have to watch Christmas Vacation 2 again. <laughs> and so I created a little short film at the end of the video essay. It was like, I'm going to need backup. And of course, I know knew of your Frosty Failures <laughs> section. I was like, let's get Michael Lee Cullen on this. Yes. Yes. Sesame and I are here for all of the goodness that is bad Christmas and holiday movies. And um, we somehow torture ourselves, but <laughs> never have we tortured ourselves this much, I don't believe. I don't think so. I think, um, like, like, I was just thinking, like, you know, you ever see a movie so bad that it actually puts you in a bad mood? And I'm thinking, like, this one, and then also, actually, be honest i actually think two theory two is better than this movie um which it is i didn't think i I didn't (laughs) think i would ever say that but i think i found a movie worse than two theory two i've never seen two theory two and i and compared to (laughs) christmas vacation two two theory two is the dark night yes (laughs) yes yes Two theory two is the citizen kane of direct video sequels compared to this (laughs) it is the yeah i I, I do not know which hick is worse, though, in reality, and that's, uh, <laughs> you know, Randy Quaid or Daniel Whitney. <laughs> At least Larry the Cable Guy is a character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess we got our initial thoughts out of the way there. Um, <laughs> what we thought of this gem of a film. Um so let's uh let, let's jump in here guys are you good with that go ahead <laughs> yeah so, let's rip yeah. the fucking band-aid off so <laughs> okay 
our story begins <laughs> with a funny character from another movie. Three other movies. Um, <laughs> Cousin Eddie, played by the funny Randy Quaid. Um, <sighs> working at a nuclear facility of some sort. <clears throat> Along, yeah. alongside, a, alongside a chimpanzee who's smarter than him. Ugh, get it? And Eddie's that's... so dumb. Get it? Get it? Yeah. That's the whole joke of the movie. Eddie's so stupid. Sorry, just get that out of the way. Um, Because <clears throat> we're going to hear that for 83 extra minutes. Oh. And the thing is, there is a good setup in this scene. You have Cousin Eddie, a chimpanzee, and the late great Fred Willard. How is losing a job to a monkey painfully unfunny with all the comedic elements at play? Exactly. That, that that's kind of a encapsulates this whole film. You had elements here and there. They just missed the mark. Like there there was a dartboard in a bar that they were hitting <laughs> at, but but somehow the dart hit the beauty shop across the street. You know, that's exactly. basically what happened. So yeah, it's like And the beauty shop was a an an Asian woman that everyone gets mispronounced her, her name in a very racist way five thousand times and is sexually predated upon by multiple people. So um Yeah. yeah. Yep. I feel so fucking sorry for that actress. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So yeah, like like I said, we start out here with uh with with with, with Eddie and this this chimpanzee named Roy. Um Roy, you know, one of the better actors in the movie. Um yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm saving my favorite performance for later. Um <laughs> he uh he outperforms Eddie like all the time on everything. So Fred Willard as his boss fires him. Um, and, you know, that makes Eddie sad. <laughs> I guess. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. And, but not before, not before Cousin Eddie's son starts off the movie by talking exclusively in exposition dumps to his crush. Yeah. Explaining where everyone is because... They can't pony up the dough for any additional original cast members. I'm pretty sure Chevy Ch Karate Dog Chase looked at the script and was like, fuck this shit. Yeah, it, I, I was reading somewhere that uh, Beverly D'Angelo said no to it. They offered her to be in it. And she said she said she, she had to stay in New York to help raise her kids or something. <laughs> I don't... I don't fucking blame her. I just watched yeah. Violet Night recently, and she's fucking great in it. Yeah, she... Like, she made a good call. Like, <laughs> yeah, stay the fuck away from Christmas Vacation 2. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, and, and, and that, that, that whole, uh, that, that whole, um, you know, dump of uh, background that we have at the beginning of the movie, um, the exposition dump, as uh, Ryan called it, um, we, his, his crush there, this, this girl, who is acting she's like yelling every one of her lines <laughs> worse than like a Disney yeah. or Nickelodeon kid in the 90s and um she's uh she, it, it, it's it's like somebody in in a fifth grade play trying to make sure that their mom hears them in the back row exactly yeah. and that's <laughs> the same with third the kid yeah. as well who like i just want to give this fucking kid a fucking swirl yeah, it, I could not stand this kid at all. It, it's interesting too because around this time he was starring on Lizzie McGuire. Wow! As, wow. As, really? I, I mean, I never really watched the show, but I looked up looked him up to see what else he had done because I was curious. And and he he starred as Lizzie's younger brother on that show. So, so he was like Whoa. one of the main cast members on that show. And. Part of this exposition dump, as you called it, uh, he says how he's the third boy in the family that was named after Clark for some reason. 
Well, Why do they, do they worship Clark in his family? Is he like a well, fallen well, idol or well, something? Clark like is a junior. Yeah, Clark oh. is a junior. So he's the third. That's what I mean, though. It's like Clark's dad is Clark, and then Clark is, you know, Chevy okay. Chase's Clark is is uh, Clark the second or junior or whatever. Oh, okay. And then he's 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 not really technically. I mean, he's he's Clark Griswold the third Johnson. What? Okay, but but, <laughs> but he said that he said I, his mom. The... Yeah, <laughs> which makes no sense. But yeah, we, we, we do. I mean, I'm, 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 we're kind of just going to go all over the place of this, I bet. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but let's get to Audrey. Yeah. Because they brought Dana Barron, the original OG. Yeah. Audrey from Vacation 83. Yes. And she's the reason they live in the Chicago. Mm-hmm. And if you want to talk about sexist jokes, <laughs> Audrey's big thing is she cheats on married men. Yeah. And, and she's all verklempt and heartbroken over finding out the guy she was with was married. <laughs> and and on top of that, it the whole time it feels like Dana Barron is in a different movie than the rest of the cast. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I, mean, I I think a lot of the characters all feel like they're in a different type of comedy. Yeah. They're it's it's not cohesive at all. It's there's no comic timing, there's no feeling of them all being in the same movie as you that goes to my next point actually what's that vacation (laughs) movies all were somewhat grounded in their humor Mm -hmm. it it felt like realistic situations like like when you have i'm trying to think of a great example like when clark wants to share a beer with russ he has that conversation and it comes out extremely awkward yeah and that, but that, but but it does feel like a, a real moment between a father and son. And yeah, it's not you know forced like any of the father son moments in this movie. It's not a monkey biting cousin Eddie's ass or snot's farts, which Ugh. the first time you hear it, it's not funny. But they keep bringing it up and bringing it up and bringing it up. I'm like, we get it. Snot's his farts smell. For fuck's sake, stop this fucking joke. But you know what? <laughs> I'm giving my MVP of acting to Snots. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, th- I think the best actor in the film. My dad, yeah, my dad I and I watched not. this movie and he said, and the only time he laughed was at like a, the first time the dog farted. <sighs> which, which, which is just because it's childish, you know, guffawing humor that we all want to laugh at. But yeah, eventually it got tiresome. But it's just like it's like yeah. dude, and plus two, like the whole this whole movie felt like just all madcap, like, but no real substance. It was like, oh, you remember vacation when it had these weird things in it? Oh, you remember um European vacation? Oh, do you remember Chris's vacation? Cool. Um, so we're gonna take all of like the funny physical comedy part. And we're just going to make the whole movie around that. And we're, we're not going to use Chevy Chase because he's actually really good at that. We're going to use Randy Quaid, who, in my opinion, I've lost all respect. I've already lost respect for him as a person years ago. But, like, as an actor, I'm like, yeah, he's okay. Now I'm like, I don't even know, dude. I'm like, why? No. Like, making these dumb little faces and, like, I'm because Nettie, I'm stupid. Ugh, let's play that up for laughs. And. Oh my god, the fucking bathroom scene with all the water that was like yeah. last like five straight minutes. That's the other thing. The pacing of this film is so fucking terrible. That scene yeah. goes on for like five, seven minutes. Also, to the end with the plane landing scene was like ten straight minutes. I'm like, okay, we get it. He can't land the plane. We get it. This movie is 83 minutes long and it yeah. feels like three hours. Yeah. It does. It's, oh my god. And and speaking of previous movies too, though, we do have Eric Idle from European Vacation. Oh God, yes, yeah, this yeah. stupid game. And, 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 and he's just there. He's just there. Yeah. And, and 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 he's just there at the beginning before they go to that other vacation and then we never see him again. So Yeah, that's it. I I, I mean it, it they would have been better off maybe bringing him on to the vacation with them or something and maybe you would have got some kind of laughs out of the two of them together. But 
not the whole like, oh, we're hurting him again and again and again kind of humor, which is that funny? Is that funny? Yeah, is that it, was yeah. European vacation, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Remember I European vacation? Yeah. Remember Eric Idle? <laughs> It's like, yeah, I do the cheapest remember. actor we could get from this franchise. It's it's like remember the you know what, basically what this whole movie is, and that too is like you take a side character, whether it be Eric Idle's character or the bigger character of of Eddie, and you make their character broader in a movie, and it doesn't work. It, it's like it, it it'd be like making like. We're going to make a movie like, you remember Teen Wolf? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're going to make a movie just about styles. <laughs> Eddie is one of those characters yeah. that's good in small doses. Mm -hmm. But it, this is a point I make in my video essay. You cannot do Christmas Vacation without Cousin Eddie. You take him out of the movie, it's about a fucking boomer whining and moaning about having an in-ground pool in his house. Exactly, right. and, 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 him, and that's why I think I had issues with European Vacation, because there's no Cousin Eddie. Because, I, I mean, I, I like him in, I mean, I'm one of the few people that really love Vegas Vacation. Oh, I God. love Vegas Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't like it for some reason. It's um, the lowest rated on Rotten Tomatoes, and I yeah. don't know why. My, my, my least favorite is European. Um, yeah, it just doesn't feel like the other movies. Um, yeah, plus Griswold is spelled wrong in that movie. Um, is it? Yeah, they spell oh, wow. it with an A instead of an O. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, and that always bothered me. I don't know why. This first time I noticed it, then I couldn't unnotice it. Well, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so so I, I like to think it's in an alternate universe where that's a different Clark Griswold and family. Um, so. Yeah, so so back to the the quote unquote plot of this movie. <laughs> um, so Eddie goes back to get his severance check and gets bit on the ass by a chimpanzee. <sighs> One of the most painfully telegraphed jokes I've ever seen in my life. Uh huh. They they showed his butt like it was like you know, I don't know, like like the beginning of a porn film or something. And um, <laughs> I don't know what they were doing, but it was like they were telegraphing it totally. Like, it's like, hey, look at this guy's ass. Something's going to happen. Compare this to The Simpsons, where Skinner is bent over and Bart has Lisa's anabolic steroid tomato. And Bart is genuinely conflicted about doing this. <laughs> and he just goes ahead and does it. Yeah. And the payoff is worth it because there's that inner conflict with Bart. Mm -hmm. And this comes out of nowhere. I mean, Roy's supposed to be a smart chimpanzee, and I know he doesn't supposedly like Eddie. If we're going to, you know, make Roy a character with, you know, <laughs> human emotions and everything. Um, <laughs> it, it just like the it's just like conflict for the sake of, sake of conflict and it doesn't make sense. And, exactly. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Um, but yeah, he, so so he bites his ass, and they're worried that you know he might sue. We get uh, we get um, doctor from Saint Elsewhere in there. Um, Stephen <laughs> Stephen first randomly. Um, who uh, I uh, noticed something. Nathan first did the music for this, and Stephen first appears in it. I do not know if they're related, but there's a chance. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, he's playing. He, he's playing a doctor who, in my canon, he's still the same doctor that he was on Saint Elsewhere, who also appeared on <laughs> Scrubs. So, in my opinion, this movie takes place in the same universe as Scrubs. <laughs> it also takes place in the Vacation universe because it directly, directly ties into most of the vacation movies. They bring yeah. up key events like the trip to Walmart and Christmas vacation. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and and Eric Idle. And, and and it also falls into the Tommy Westfall universe of where everything is interconnected in the whole like world of cinema and television. So because of St. Elsewhere. Um so I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, Ryan. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was big on St. Elsewhere. Yeah, but you're you're familiar with the Tommy Westfall universe yes, theory. Yes, the snow globe shit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So everything does play, take place, and this 
so so this does take place in that universe then. <laughs> so 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 there's like a connection between this and like Doctor Who. <laughs> and, Degrassi, oh God. and Degrassi Junior High, you know, so it's all in the same universe. So that makes me feel a little bit better, right? Don't tarnish Doctor Who I'm... with like, <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> so Doctor Who is too good for this shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, no. This is better, right? No. Mm. I'm trying to convince <laughs> myself that I didn't like waste <laughs> 83 minutes of my life or whatever it was, 73 minutes. I don't know. So, um, <laughs> Well, I wasted more because I, I got confused a couple weeks ago and I thought we were going to be doing it. So I watched it thinking we we're going to do it the next day. And I was like, oh, God damn, I'm going to have to watch this a second time because I'm not going to remember much. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sorry, Matt. That's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I should be the one apologizing. <laughs> so, so so he get, he gets bit on the ass and they think he's going to get, uh, they think that, that he might sue them. Which you know he's an idiot, so I would even think of that. But um, they send they send him off onto a vacation, the paid va- Christmas vacation, so they don't have to you know because that's going to satisfy them. You know, because yeah, with the hilarious fucking green screen, laughably bad green screen. Oh God! Oh yeah. So... In which they crash, and you see the painfully bad green screen when they do crash. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! And that, yeah, even when they're riding too with the dumbass. Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm, I'm, I'm like getting pissed off. Just it, it thinking doesn't, about it. It doesn't matter. Go ahead, go ahead and say whatever you like, want because when they were when he catches a shark or not catches when he, you know, he's fishing and he's doing his Randy Quaid dumb fucking faces and ugh, and all this bullshit. And he like an idiot. He wraps the thing around his neck and then he's like. Ugh. I'm being pulled into the water, and they're all like, "Oh my god!" And blah blah blah. And the shark is pulling the boat backwards, which you know actually would be a good thing because that way they could probably get back to shore instead of being lost at sea. But fine, no matter. And then um, and then like Ed Asner. Oh, by the way, so like there's this whole fucking bullshit scene where they get to the, the they fly. I can't even. I'm like losing my mind here. So like, so they get to the. I'll, I'll just talk about that later. Anyway, so they're at the, they're on the boat, and then like they're like hit the gas. So it asks their you know hits the gas and it pulls the shark forward and blah blah blah. And finally, Eddie's able to get the hook out or whatever, and then he doesn't die. Which I mean, I wish he would have actually gotten eaten by the shark. But like, and and then that's when they hit the rock. But yeah, this whole time you see this dumbass green screen for this whole boat ride. Oh my god! I mean, it was two thousand three, so I guess it, it, it was bad it for two thousand three. It was bad What's for two thousand three. I mean, yeah. yeah was, well, I mean, I know it was a it made, was a... made for TV movie, but still, it was bad. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it would have been like acceptable on a sitcom on TV, maybe, or like Saturday Night Live, but not. Yes, yeah. you know. Um, at that time, the uh, that's the other thing you mentioned here. Two words that I never. Th- thought should be associated with this movie ed and asner um yep ed asner is too good for this shit. yes yeah you know why did he why did he take this role it, it's gotta be money or something that's but, my only but thing. still you gotta like legacy. to think ed asner is not this broke i know yeah there's no way that i mean come on like I mean, you got you got your legacy to look after, even if they do offer you money. You got you got to think. I was in Christmas Vacation to playing one of the slimiest, creepiest characters ever. Oh, let's get to that point. Oh yeah. my god, Who's this that? dude needs to be Who's on that? a sex offender registry. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He was the slimiest. Um, Compare this to Vacation Eighty Three. Not to interrupt your point. Oh, compare this to Vacation 83. When Clark is seeing Chrissy Brinkley, that works because he's kind of a dork. And mm-hmm. when he's given the opportunity to fuck Christy Brinkley, he's repentant about it. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Like, he didn't think he was going to go. She was going to ask him to fuck, basically. And he's truly repentant about the situation. Whereas you have both third and Uncle Nick, aka Ed Nasner, just practically circle jerking when the <laughs> when the fucking 
hot Asian girl is half nude and we see side boob. Yeah. So. Yep. I just. Wanna, oh, I, I, I just Ed Asner. He's won daytime. Not not he was nominated for daytime Emmys, but he's won primetime Emmys, Golden Globes, TV Land Award. <laughs> I mean, um, everything he's been in, I liked. I mean, he yeah. was Johnny Lawrence's stepdad in Cobra Kai, and he and played he, that role. Yeah, and it's like one of those Mandela effect roles in Cobra Kai that you could have swore Ed Asner was in those original films, and he's not. Yeah. Yeah, that's how well he slots beautifully into that. Yeah, show. It's just like why? I mean, I mean, he's the guy in Up. I mean, <laughs> yeah. How? <laughs> exactly. He was also in Dead to Me season one. He was good in that. Yeah. <clears throat> not to mention. I mean, not to mention. I mean, he's he's he was freaking in Mary Tyler Moore. Um. So- <laughs> I just love how we're all going psychotic over Ed Asner being in this movie. I know. I'm, 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 literally, uh, I'm literally crying here, guys. Okay, anyway. So... <laughs> but yeah, I'll be like, okay, so I can, I can, you know, defend Clark the Third here a little bit because he's probably going through puberty, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, 2003, you know, so, but like, Fucking Uncle Nick here being like 80 years old and doing this shit. And it looks like they both like came at the same time, which is really creepy. Uh, because you're like relatives and you're okay, whatever. And then uh yeah. So so Ed Asner being in this movie would have been like, you know, randomly in Tooth Fairy 2, Marlon Brando showing up or something. You know, I'm <laughs> exactly. just saying just... Oh god, yeah, Marlon Brando and Tooth. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> no, Robert De Niro in Too yeah, Fairy right, 2. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. So we're kind of jumping around, but yeah, so when they get to the the when they so like there's this this dumb thing where yeah, the whole Eric Idle thing, Randy Quaid's or sorry, Eddie keeps knocking shit around and he falls through the the scanner thing where they you know scan the bags through the the whatever you call it, that thing at the airport, the and TSA then thing or whatever, yeah. And he does it a few times. Then they're in the plane, and then he's like, Eddie's like, "Look at all those people. They look like ants down there." And and like Clark the Third's like, "They are ants. We haven't left." The-. Actually, I did like that line a little. Yeah, that bit. was probably the only like, time I laughed. The only time in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I was stone faced throughout this movie. I laughed more at Vacation 2015 rewatching all these for my video. I actually, I, I actually kind of like 2015 too. Don't don't kill me. But anyway, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it it's flawed, but I like it to a point. So, um, the uh, Charlie Day and Charlie Day and Chris Hemsworth deserve better vacation movies. Oh yeah, actually, everybody involved in that movie deserved a better vacation movie, and, and the audience did too. But yeah. um, the uh, <laughs> I still bought it for my collection. I don't know if I'm going to buy this one like Ryan did. I'm what, returning what you, this. Are you returning it? Okay, good. <laughs> I tried to rent this actually once in 2000 and um, I think it was early 2014 actually at um, Family Video. And I was spared the torture because there was a scratch in the DVD and it only worked for like the first 10 minutes of the movie. I was kind of glad actually because even the first 10 minutes I was like, I don't think this is going to be a good movie. And just by the music alone, because it looked sounded like it was done on like a Casio keyboard. And I was like, wow, they couldn't even afford like a real like music here. It had to be like shitty synthesizer music. <laughs> like, Oh my God. Yeah. Done by Sound Nathan, Nathan so First, bad. who may or may not be related to Stephen First. Well, it, I mean, it very well could be, or just could be a coincidence. Yes. Who knows? Uh, no. Speaking of music, just... there's there's a scene where the music completely drowns out Cousin Eddie. That's right. Yeah. It's, yes. And which you know might not be a bad thing. I think but, uh, that, I think they this... were going for a joke with that, but I don't think it worked. Like most of the jokes in this movie. But At all. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Like, oh, I'm getting so pissed off. So like there's remember so like the shark scene where they hit the rock, right? 
So Eddie gets his head thrown out there, and then Catherine goes, Eddie, where's the rest of you? It's like, was that some weird reference to that Ronald Reagan film from like the 30s? Like, that's a weird deep cut there. Like, no I, pun intended. I but doubt um, I doubt that. Well, okay, good, good. I hope not because I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, anyway. Uh, I doubt anybody involved in this film actually saw another movie ever. I don't think yeah. so. I think they. <laughs> It looked like they actually came from an island that was uninhabited, and they're like, that was their first idea of coming up with a movie script. And they're like, mm-hmm. here it is. They're like, cool. So what we gotta do? Yeah, we're gonna make a bunch of racist stereotypes by like not being able to like pronounce an Asian woman's name See, by I like think... calling it like Mickey Mookie or Licky Licky or oh my god, I just this... want to like murder them. I swear to God, like. <clears throat> this... And we get it. Mecca is hot. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. like. And so, so, so I, I have a theory now about the writing of this movie. Okay, you know, Roy the chimpanzee. You know, there's that <laughs> theory that if you put a bunch of chimpanzees with a typewriter in a room for long enough, they might write Hamlet. <laughs> I think along that way, before they get to Hamlet, they write this movie first. Yeah, it's like a transitional period. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my God, dude. And this was actually I, like said, this was actually written by the producer Maddie Simmons, who produced all of the vacation movies. Well, you know, that's a different skill set entirely. Yeah. So um Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I saw that and I'm like, really? Did you not you watch know, the movies that you produced? Um Exactly. Just because you're a house painter doesn't make you Michelangelo, and just because you're Michelangelo doesn't make you a house painter. Totally different skill sets. <laughs> like <laughs> um so anyways, back to the plot here. Um, they get to the island, and some stuff happens. Um, <laughs> the, uh, they meet, they, they meet uh, Muka Luka Mickey, whatever her name is, Milwaukee. Um, <laughs> well, she's from Milwaukee. Yeah, but that's what they call her at times. So, um, yeah. They, uh, they meet her, and see, see what... Okay, as a writer myself, I would have made her or somebody else turn out to be a villain, and yeah. maybe you would have had a decent, you know, plot to follow here. But that's just me. Well, without <laughs> without jumping ahead, he kinda is. Well, too too Audrey, <laughs> yes. But I, I mean, like maybe there would have been some kind of other twist, you know that was yeah pertinent to the plot and not just have her there as a woman for Ed Asner to try to, to, try to make out with and stuff. To um, sexual yeah, thought yeah. on camera. And, uh, and, oh, my God. I can't believe, too, that National Lampoon's actually put their stamp of approval on this as well. Like, oh, wow. Maddie, 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 Maddie. National Lampoon has no quality control whatsoever. Yeah, I, there are only three good non-vacation National Lampoon movies. Wow. Animal House, Lord Weapon 1, and Bam Wilder. Yes. Um, And Maddie Simmons, though, at the time, owned National Lampoon. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, no wonder you could just feel Maddie Simmons jerking off whenever he's writing about Mookalaka Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so, which, by the way, I'm going to name my first child. I don't plan to ever have children, so don't worry about that. Um, I'm not even sure if that's her real name. No, because they never really Because they even... keep fucking it up. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the whole racist gag of, like, oh, we can't under... It's like, you know what? Fuck you. Like, you know, if you could pronounce, like, long-ass German names and Russian names, you think you can get one Asian name correct? Like, really? But, like, whatever. And then it's like, that's part of the joke. Get it? It's like, no. <laughs> See, there's, we go back to the idea of satire. Okay. So, like, when you make like a quote racist joke, but you're doing it to make fun of the people who are racist, that's different than just be like, Haha, she's Asian. She's got a funny name, right? Uh, get it? It's like, no, I don't get it. Explain it to me. I want, I want you to say the yeah. words so you can out yourself. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is the type of movie geeks and gamers would call a masterpiece. And, and, and these are the same people who do not realize that the stupid person in the movie is Eddie. 
They're, right. they're the same people that think Archie Bunker is the hero of all in the family. <laughs> right, or Al, Bu- or Al Bundy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's you don't realize that the stupid things are being said by the stupid people. But, but at right. the very least, Archie Bunker and Al Bundy are fully three dimensional characters. Yes, there but. is not a single one dimensional character. Like you guys said, Snots is the only three dimensional character of the <laughs> film. Yes. I mean, I mean, he's more useful. He pees on the fire to take it out, let you know, put it out, and he, you know, sort of, kind of helps the boar try to kill Eddie, but is unsuccessful at doing so, and uh, which would have been good for the movie. But unfortunately, Eddie killed the boar by accident, of course. And um, yeah. so, my God, um, I'm going to have like an aneurysm. Um, so. I just want to bring attention to the point of when they first get to get to the island or whatever, and how like immediately they're like assaulting the women who are putting like lays over their head or whatever, or their necks. Yeah, and then that's like our first indication of like, oh boy, here we go. Like we're gonna get the jokes about like, yeah, let's just keep kissing them, and oh my god, and um and. The dumbass scene with the island where he Eddie's just eating like a pig and he's like, Oh, deep fried eel, deep fried. <laughs> get it? Yeah, I get it. Cause you're Eddie and you eat deep fried everything. How about you eat a deep fried cyanide pill and you just chew on it and then, and, you know, save us the trouble? You it, know, it and, wouldn't do anything to him, obviously, because he's got a plate in his head. Oh, that's right. The nuclear waste. Yeah. It makes and, and he's got a plate fat. in his head that's somehow a bug zapper now, too. Yeah. Like, um, and they run that, that joke into the ground, too. Yeah. I know. It's like, it wasn't even not... funny the first time. No. Oh. No. And, um, so we also get the introduction of this character, Melbourne Jack, who's a Australian, you know, you know, guy who looks like the, that one, uh, Paul Hogan. Yeah. He looks like Paul Hogan wannabe played by Julian Stone, who <laughs> was the first Jerry Jacks on general hospital. I used to watch that show. So that's why again, another actor that yeah. looked at this and was like, no, nah, fuck this mate. Yeah, I'm sure Paul Hogan was offered the role first, and I'm sure every other Australian actor in the world was, and then Julian Stone. <laughs> Julian Stone. Oh. Julian Stone had been replaced and as his character on General Hospital and needed something to do. I'm sure. Um, yeah, and she's the love interest for Audrey. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead with that one. <laughs> oh boy, Audrey. I'd love to imagine. Juliet Lewis getting the script for this. Oh yeah, I'd love to see Juliet Lewis's reaction to getting this script. She would probably straight up murder Maddie Simmons in her sleep if she got the script. Because what we find out is that Mecca is married to Audrey's ex that she was crying about. Audrey in any of the movies was never this pathetic. Like, even when she was dating Billy Zabka in European Vacation, she wasn't <laughs> pathetic. I mean, she, she, she had that whole thing where she was missing him the whole time. And they kind of yeah. took, took that thread and pulled it too hard. And yeah. created this new persona for Audrey. Which, I mean, I know Audrey's different in every movie, basically. But still, because the kind of the point of those characters. That's another character. It's like, you didn't need to bring Audrey in here to expand on her character, honestly. Um, All right. Yeah. Going back to what I said about taking Cousin Eddie on Christmas vacation. You can't take Cousin Eddie on Christmas vacation, but you can sure as shit take Audrey on Christmas vacation, too. She yeah. adds nothing to this role. No. Aside from giving them, aside from giving them shelter. And, <laughs> and like I said earlier, her more than any other character felt like she was in her own movie. Like, like, yeah. like there was this whole other plot going on and her lines of dialogue belonged in that movie. And, yeah. and along with other dialogue that might've developed her character and made it actually kind of funny. She wasn't doing that bad of a job acting. It was just the. There was no direction. Yeah. Like Miriam <laughs> Flynn in the film is trying to make this, make the script work, mm-hmm. but it's the direction that fails her. It's the direction that fails Dana Barron. It's the direction that fails yeah. Randy Quaid. I mean, they're they're all like I mean, Miriam Flynn is like a, a well trained comedic actress, you know, and she's a great actress, honestly. 
She's great in the vacation movies, the other ones. Um, and, you know, she was with Second City and other things that I've, I'm looking up right now. And it's just like, how do, do they squander her and Ed Asner and even Randy Quaid? You know, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, say what you will about Randy Quaid's politics, but the dude has range with a capital R. Mm-hmm. This is a guy who will do comedy, will do action films, will do hard dramas. Like, he was actually a great actor. Great character actor in his heyday. I mean, he played Lyndon Johnson in a, in a movie and decently, and then you know he was great in Independence Day. He's you know it's oh yeah, Independence Day, and also too he was in Midnight Express back in the seventies. Yeah, and he was in. The, uh, he played he was, one he was of the, in the last picture show. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So it's just I don't know. It's hard to stomach the fact that. So much was squandered in this movie. Um, Sorry, yes. I burped. <laughs> so, so, Sorry, so, it's okay. Um, so, so what else? Uh, what else happens in this? I don't know if one of you guys want to kind of take. Want to go, Ryan? You want to go? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we pretty much covered everything. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the director of this movie. There's a director on this movie? Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> um, I just had to look up what else he's quote unquote done. Um Nick <laughs> Mark M A R C K, I guess that's Mark. Merrick, Mark, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I'm looking at the back of the D V D cover as we speak that I bought solely for a prop and I'm returning immediately. Yeah, he, he uh he worked on a number of episodes of Veronica Mars, Northern Exposure, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and The Wonder Years. Um, also episodes of Monk, Gilmore Girls, Malcolm in the Middle, Dawson's Creek, The X-Files, Charmed, and and also directed two films. This one and The Jungle Book, Mowgli's Story. What? Okay. <laughs> in 1998. <laughs> How, how, uh, he could barely do Christmas Vacation 2. How the hell did he land something involving the Jungle Book? Yeah, and this was this is not a good one, though, by the way. This is the Walt Disney <laughs> Presents um, movie that stars the... Um, stars Brian Doyle Murray from the other Vacation movies as Baloo. Um, Fred Savage is a narrator. And you have what? Yes. <laughs> um, I've seen this, and I think I need to cover it for the podcast sometime. Um, there is. Uh, I'm looking. Oh, this kid Brandon Baker plays um, Mowgli, and he was. Um. What? What? Did, oh, he was in the Disney Channel movie Johnny Tsunami. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So. This is the pedigree we have of the director. I mean, he did oh, direct wow. some. He, it, it's weird. He somehow was able to direct, you know, like X Files and, um, even Dawson's Creek, which is a decent was a decent you know drama show. I just don't get how he could direct any of those things that, you know, and like Monk and whatnot that had at least things that were watchable, as opposed to this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. This is easily like top five worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Let mm-hmm. me put you like this. Mm-hmm. Hillary's America is a far better movie than this. <laughs> There's a scene in Hillary's America where Woodrow Wilson is watching Birth of a Nation, and then the Klansmen from Birth of a Nation literally jump out of the screen. And Woodrow <laughs> Wilson, the reenactor that plays Woodrow Wilson, is following the Klansmen out that jumped out of the screen. And he's giving them this, hey, baby, look, at the end. At least that's a choice. There is nothing resembling a choice in Christmas Vacation 2. No. (laughs) When Dinesh D'Souza does a better movie than you, you (laughs) fucked up. And somehow his movie was less political, too. Oh, wait, I'm joking. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Um, the, uh, I don't know. 
But I bet you Randy Quaid loved uh, Dinesh's movie. So, um, <laughs> yeah, maybe oh. possible. Who knows at this point, though? He might not even. I don't know. Yeah. So you want to get to the whole? They build a house bullshit, and then the house oh, yeah. falls down. Oh and then... my fucking god! I completely forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they build a house out of palm trees and whatnot. <laughs> And if you want to talk about telegraphed jokes, yeah, this is probably the longest telegraph joke ever committed to film. Hmm. There was a missed opportunity with the joke too. Um, yeah, what they should have. Okay, so 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 they're gonna like christen the house with this like alcoholic drink that that Eddie makes, and they have it in a coconut, and they swing it to hit the house. The house should have fallen then. Not when they were all inside of it. I know that they were trying to trick you, like, oh, you think it's going to fall now. But the thing is, go with your gut instinct and just go with the first joke. Yeah, exactly. And that's the problem with this movie. There was numerous times where it was like, they should have had a joke there, but they didn't. Even, you know, even bad movies, you kind of want there to be like certain beats that will hit there. And it's still a bad movie, but it's not, you know... Mm -hmm horrible where this just kind of like it's like like i said they're they're throwing darts at a bar and they hit the beauty shop across the street <laughs> it's just... i still stand firm that if blumhouse's trooper dare were marketed as a comedy it'd be one of my favorite films of that year yeah instead they marketed it as a straight up horror movie i mean i have yet to see it but from what i understand it's basically groundhog day right no, not true. No, that's no, happy no, death day. Ha- no, I'm sorry. Never. That's happy death day. Yeah, I, get, that, I get those all conf- I get those all confused. So yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen half of them. Um, I got kind of blummed out. Um, so I don't know what else. What else do we have to say about this? Anything here, Matt? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. Actually, if I'm being totally honest, I didn't actually see the last five minutes of it when, when he was trying to land a plane because um, I couldn't, I had to stop it for some reason. I don't remember why. And then I, I didn't. Um, so I don't, did he, did he eventually land a plane or did he hopefully crash it and then like killed everyone on board? He that, sadly that, landed the plane. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 and he gave the, uh, the, the air traffic controller guy, um, some kind of mental issue where he couldn't talk. He was in shock. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's a stuttering mess. Yeah. And he sees cousin Eddie and he freaks the fuck out. He runs away and then Catherine says, Oh, God bless you, Eddie. You, you saved him or something, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You sure have a way with words or whatever the hell she said. Yeah. Um, okay. He's yeah. got a way with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what was better comedy to me is a video that Randy Quaid made in 2020 when all of the election fraud conspiracy theories were coming out. And he made some bizarre video with like a black light in the background or something like that. And he was like doing this weird like drone tone. And he was like, then at one point he just goes like, makes this weird sound with his mouth. Like that was better comedy, this entire movie right there. So, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, I looked at a lot of those videos for the Christmas vacation video. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he made more than one? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. Like, there's a video where he's like in full on psychotic mode. And there's yeah. a bunch of flashing red and blue lights. And he's like, Donald Trump is the greatest president ever. He's talking like he's a WWE wrestler. Oh, that's the one I saw, yeah, with the red lights and shit. Yeah. And at one point he goes, makes this weird sound like he's like a lizard or some shit. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Maybe he's a reptilian. Maybe maybe he, he was let, like, ex done letting out his reptilian self, you know? Yeah. Has you ever Illuminati seen those videos? Um, yeah, the Illuminati. You ever see those videos where, like, they freeze frame it and they're like, this is when the person was shaping back into their true reptilian form. It's like, no, you <laughs> no. hit pause at the right time, you fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think we're all at a loss for so, words here. <laughs> yeah. So I looked up on IMDb 
There is one 10, 10 star review for this movie. Really? Come on. <laughs> I'm not, I have yet to read it, so it's probably a joke. It's but, probably sarcastic, yeah. yes. But 10 out of 10, this person who is EDASH941 wrote in December of 2003, shortly after this movie came out. Um, the Christmas folly hasn't been milked away. <laughs> Many people will think this was a terrible movie because it didn't have Chevy Chase in it. And nope, it was a TV movie. movie. <laughs> I tell you what, this movie is a new classic. Randy Quaid was great as his famous character cousin Eddie Johnson, and other familiar faces return as well to re to reprise Catherine and Vacation One's Audrey Griswold. The plot was a little silly, but that's what Eddie is, a silly man who's not all that bright. The slapstick comedy wasn't over-flooding the movie. However, Eric Idle does a great job at his slapstick approach as the accident prone Englishman from Vacation 2. If you need a good laugh, this movie will do it for you. It will never replace Christmas Vacation 1, but it'll tick you, tickle your funny bone. Mm. Mm. Okay. I, <laughs> Here I, was I couldn't even hold back laughter. I know. I'm angry at this person. Okay, I wait a minute. Too. So accident prone, what do you mean? Other people are the ones causing his accidents. He's Eric got Idol is literally only in Christmas Vacation 2 for like 20 seconds tops. Yeah. And that's why he, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not the one causing his accidents, though. He's not the one who's accident prone. No. Randy, wait, I'm sorry, Eddie was the one knocking him over. And the same thing with Clark was hitting him with his car and shit. That's not, <laughs> you know. Um, so He's that's a terrible review. Joke. Yeah, it's a terrible review, and it's also not factual as well. I would say <laughs> slapstick was not beat to death. Are you kidding me? The whole if movie that review was... came out today, it would be like this movie. Best of all, this movie is not woke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not woke because they make fun of the Asian lady's name, and then they sexually assault her. <laughs> it's not woke. Yeah, okay. Which is why. I love it that the alt-right is embracing Top Gun Maverick, blissfully ignoring the fact that if Phoenix or the black guy even so much as coughed on Maverick, they'd be making woke Top Gun goes full woke videos all across <laughs> YouTube. Oh my god. What did they say recently? What what, what movie was it they saying like they liked it because it wasn't woke? And uh what was it? It was um Top Gun Maverick. No, so I know that one, but there was another movie where they were saying it was it was actually uh, it was one of the Marvel shows. They said it wasn't woke, and that's why they liked it better than the other ones. Or um, I think oh, they shit, were talking. Was... To, maybe it was Loki. No, it was it was after that. It was um, it was one of the newer ones that no Spider Man No Way Home. Oh, they were the saying it wasn't woke, and that's why they liked Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm like, no, they liked it because it's objectively a good movie. That's why. Yeah, um, and, and I hate to break it to them. <laughs> it is actually a woke film, but that's the what was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the crux of the film is all three Peter Parkers trying to rehabilitate their respected villains. Yeah, yeah I think that's kind of woke, you know, mm -hmm. but whatever. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that you have a multi-diverse cast in that movie, but that's a, um, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the brilliance of it. They snuck woke into the movie to trick the anti wokesters into not thinking it was woke. So, you oh, know. okay. I mean, I don't know if that was your Morbius. Intention. It's Morbius. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that was the one they were gassing up. Is Morbius? Oh, it was Morbius? Oh, of yeah. course, we'll do something like that. Uh, oh, that, yeah. we have a fun spoiler alert on that one. Awesome. Yeah, I have not seen it. But I don't care. I've already watched the review of it. I already know what happens, but I have not seen it. Right. But I had the yeah. I had the theater screening Sony wish they had when they re-released Morbius because of the <laughs> memification of it. Opening yeah. night. We had the time of our lives. We were ripping the movie when Jared Leto first comes out as Morbius. Everyone was laughing their asses off. I this was the most fun theater experience I ever had was Morbius <laughs> opening night. That, that that is until next week when I'm running out a whole theater and we're gonna watch the Christmas vacation too. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't fucking do it. Oh <laughs> um, this would be like CIA torture. 
it, yeah, it, totally. Like it, we 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 should rent out a theater and then just invite people and don't tell them what movie we're going to show them. Oh God! <laughs> just... Then lock the doors. No one can leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're evil right now. No. I know. <laughs> yes. you, have, you have to stay for all eighty-three minutes, we, we, and we, then like you know, we rent like the theater. We rent the theater, up. play the movie for everybody else. We lock the doors, leave them in there, and we go watch a different movie. Um, yeah. no, no, an eighty-three minute movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> First screening of Avatar The Way of Water, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, I've been waiting for this. And it's like fucking Eddie. God damn it. Uh I, I don't know what to say. What else to say about this? Is there anything else to say? I mean, it's uh, I mean I mean obviously we didn't cover everything in the movie, but um I, I think, think we, we did for the most good. part. We did for I the mean... most part, but I'm just saying that, but I don't think we have to either. So um yeah. <laughs> the... Well you don't because much like the Christmas project, that's another point I wanted to make. I didn't write any notes down, so I'm just riffing from what I remember. But um, that's one of the things I want to mention. So, like, Christmas project, we, we reviewed that recently, 2016 film by Covenant Pictures or whatever it's called. I think it's a Mormon-based, um, or at least led by Mormons, not necessarily by the church, but people who happen to be Mormon, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but um, it was like, the movie just comprised like scenes and they just cobbled it together to make a movie. And that's how this felt like it just like scenes, but they just made separate scenes. And they're like, how about we just make a movie where we just take these scenes and we just kind of put them together and hopefully it'll, you know, approximate, you know, a plot or something like that. I, I, I would rather watch the Christmas project like 10 thousand more times before i have yeah well me movie. too uh, i haven't seen a christmas project and this is that sounds like a way better fucking movie it is oh it was it was it, it is it, yeah. it, it actually <laughs> it actually has some character development and characters you kind of care about not done well but um <laughs> it's better than this um yeah i definitely would rather watch uh you know Christmas mail or um <laughs> jingle all the way to or uh some of the other ones that we've car- covered jingle the all the way to <laughs> I'd rather watch music than this again. Yes. Uh, oh, there is... oh music. Wait, what's that? Music is the movie written and directed by Sia about the non-verbal autistic white girl and she's playing oh. it as to quote Kirk Lazarus from Tropic Thunder. Full retard. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like within the first minute and 33 seconds, I was like, I made the biggest mistake in my fucking life. Because no, she she's coming out, she's doing dirt face throughout this number. She has what looks like to be black face on her. Oh my god. And braided hair and she's doing hip hop dances and taking selfies and shit. I'm like, oh my god, I made a big fucking mistake. <clears throat> well I think we made a but it made for good comedy, so <laughs> I mean I like some of Sia's music, so I'm kind of like a little bit disappointed, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's okay, you can still like the music. Um I mean I like some of her songs. Yeah. I don't I don't think I've listened to like a full album. Is that the one? Okay. So I guess she doesn't realize that like the vast majority of autistic people are like fully functional. Like that's like yeah. a stereotype that like every single one or even most is like completely like, you know what I mean? Like whatever, even if that's the case, so what? They're still human beings. They, you know, it's like. <laughs> and the only person who seemed to care about this movie and the character was Maddie Ziegler, the girl who plays the titular music. Mm. She's like, are you sure? She was trying to talk Sia away from this. But <laughs> Sia was all about directing her as, in the words of Kirk Lazarus, full retard. Wow. And <laughs> Ziegler's a decent actress, so I don't know. Yeah, I saw <laughs> her in the fallout. She's yeah. won my most improved award yeah. this year. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, Anyways, um, any final thoughts from either one of you on uh, on Christmas Vacation Two? No, uh, I want to. You know, damn well this gets no stars, and may God have mercy on its yeah. soul. I 
I don't. I want to put this out of my memory. Like, you know. well, every year from now on, we're gonna rewatch this movie and reevaluate it. <laughs> no, no. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> I would okay. rather watch the Star Wars Christmas special on acid and DMT at the same time while having Joe Rogan's podcast playing in the background while talking <laughs> about. A- <laughs> yes. Um, yes. That actually sounds like a way more irritating experience. It does, especially well, with it's, the, it's, it's a Joe the Rogan stir. experience. Um, well, it's a Joe Rogan experience, especially with the stir, <laughs> with the stir and the creepy, um, the creepy grandfather who's watching the pornography for a kids movie. Anyway, and on um, softcore pornography with the weird virtual reality shit thing he's got going on, and uh. Something tells me He's, Joe Rogan would like I just it. love the pure coke-fueled insanity of the Star Wars holiday season. I know. I mean, I still watch it every Christmas now as, like, my new tradition. But but uh, I watch it with my niece because I played it to her in 2020 uh, Christmas, and she's like, whoa. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're a good uncle there, Matt. Yeah. Good uncle. Um, <laughs> uncle of the year. Yes. So, um, yeah, something tells me, though, that Joe Rogan would enjoy Christmas Vacation, too. Um, Probably un- unironically enjoy yes. it. Like you know, that's great. It's not woke. <laughs> yeah, take some more steroids and die. Yeah. Like, anyway, um, the last thing. How you, can the- anyone sit through three hours of Joe Rogan? I tried, so, couldn't I, do it. Mister, the I, last I thing you watch... did of any significance was news radio in the nineties. So yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Thirty fucking years ago or something, and then uh, he's dead and... fucking last in the funny rankings on news radio. Andy mm-hmm. Dick is funnier than he is on news. Yeah, radio. I, he's, and Andy Dick's got some problems too. But uh, and news radio, it, uh, news radio, by the way, is my favorite so- television it's show. A, it's a really good. Time. I love news radio, and it 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 hurts me every time I watch it that Andy Dick and Joe Rogan are involved in that cast. <laughs> but but I kind of separate them from the characters, so I'm good. So it's like Yeah. Oh, so hard to do. That's what I want to do someday is a news radio rewatch podcast. But um one day when I have, you know, all the free time in the world. Oh. And then you can I have do- so many sub series ideas that Yeah. I wish I had more time for. I know. Um, speaking of sub series, is um, you know make make sure uh, we'll, we'll let uh, Ryan plug all of his stuff again in a minute. But um, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. I've got a new video coming out soon. It's going to be our first like major video that we've done just specifically for YouTube exclusively. Um, it's uh, on an interesting topic about television and movies. So. Um, you know, nothing about a specific film or TV show, but you'll enjoy it that I wrote and produced recently. So, um, so anything else, guys? No, no. <laughs> okay. So Ryan, let us know where everybody can find you and, uh, you know, listen to you and everything. You can find me on my website, www.newrealmsmedia.com. You can find me on all the socials at New Realms Media for all of them, including Hive. And I also have a Letterbox account, letterbox.com slash Ryan Watches. It's where I post my current movie reviews because I really don't have time right now to do like video movie reviews, especially given I have two videos that are long overdue that I want to get done. <laughs> And uh, you do host the uh, on your uh, YouTube channel. Um, that's New uh, Realms, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Everything's at New Realms, including my YouTube channel. I also have Spoiler Alert with me and Dustin, where we break down big ticket movies as they happen. Yeah. I've been lucky to be a guest on their show a couple times. It's been pretty yes. fun. Um, I really enjoy being on their show. It's probably my favorite guest spot that I've ever done on the podcast or talk show i am beyond touched yeah no i'm serious i'm beyond touched thank you yeah because i've i've done a few here and there but you know you guys are fun not that i'm saying the other people aren't fun don't get me wrong people yeah (laughs) Yeah. but um the uh yeah make sure uh for us you know like i said check out our youtube which is hopefully going to be growing growing soon um we had a lot of views on youtube recently for the audio (laughs) of uh of Christmas project for some reason that kind of blew up. I mean, it's only like 300 and some views in like a few days, but 
I don't know why, but like it's the algorithm. You never know. Yeah, it's like it's it weird. Did Scott reach out to you guys or something like that? What's that? Oh yeah, she did. did. Um, that was about Christmas, Christmas mail. Um, one of the stars of the, of the movie. She kind of got mad that we made Ashley fun got, of Ashley Scott. Kind of got mad. She's like, "How frosty of a failure was it?" <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what happens. Like I, I was I'm a big fan of like, Ashley Scott, make, so it was kind of you like, make a pot. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I was just saying it was kind of a double edged sword there because I'm a big fan of hers. The fact that she communicated to us in some way um because I, I i loved her on birds of prey the tv series and uh she was also really good in um and uh was that jericho the tv series um so yeah it's uh it's kind of uh disheartening when she didn't like my <laughs> post but i don't blame her either because yeah <laughs> if somebody if somebody did that about one of the movies i directed or acted in i'd probably feel the same way so yeah, I mean, I always kind of do this thing where I do like the self-deprecating humor in these video or in these podcasts where I'm like, well, you know, at least they're paid actors and they're making a living doing this. And I'm like, I'm just, you know, making fun of shit on the podcast, you know, <laughs> so it's like, it's true, you know, yeah, which I'm not saying that just to say that I'm like, I'm actually genuine when I say that I'm like, well, they, they still found a way to do what they love and get and, paid for it. So I, I mean, that, that's that's one thing that. um I've always thought, you know, no matter how bad a movie is, people spent time and they made it, and at least they yeah. made, at least they made something and weren't destroying something. Well, some movies can do that. In um, most cases, but with Christmas Vacation too, I think that's the exception to the rule. Um, <laughs> this this definitely could have not existed, and the world would have been better off. Um, for it they so, did destroy my you, holiday spirit if anyone comes at you and goes how bad of it was and like well in this case i'm gonna say fuck you you shouldn't have been involved in this movie but yeah you know so. should have rethought that but i guess you know you needed the money and um so true but uh be sure to check out our um our t public our patreon all of our social media um it's all linked in the show notes um you know all the the uh, Facebook and the and the TikToks and the Yik Yaks and whatever the kids are doing these <laughs> days, we got something on there. I don't know what they're called. I'm an old man. Um, and uh, you know, want to thank Ryan for being on the show. And, Glad to be on air. Um, always one of our favorite guests. Um, and hope to have you back again and maybe Dustin sometime. And uh, remember that I love you. Sesame loves you. I'm yep. assuming Ryan does. He may. I don't know. I don't want to speak for him. I'm feeling the love. Okay. And bye bye. I. All right. Take Thanks care. Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two Podcast, a Cullen Park production, produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.